Hey there, it's Blair here at Time Trades. Thanks for joining me this weekend. Today is Easter Sunday, March 31st, 2024, and this is your weekly analysis video. All right, so last week we were pretty range bound, as you can see here. Um, I'm going to give myself a B for this forecast. Uh, there wasn't much of a pivot to speak of in this area over here, and certainly I got the price wrong. Definitely not an A, didn't get a, a touch in the box at all. Um, uh, we we did see, well, could I argue there's a uptrend here? No, maybe, I, maybe to be more honest, it's not a B, it's probably more likely a C. Um, uh, because there was really no trend to speak of and I was looking for some sort of continuation of a trend. All right, we'll call it a C for last week's effort. Okay, so we still have a couple more forecast boxes here um, coming up. We've got this one here um, starting on Tuesday and ending on Wednesday. This one is a low. And then after that, we've got um, uh, one for the following week, um, uh, starting uh, Friday, April 5th, or actually it starts this the end of this coming week. Okay, so what do we do with this um, and how are we going to update this going forward? Okay, so before I get into that, I want to talk about an update I made um, just this morning and yesterday uh, to the juice indicator on time trades. And the the reason I did that is I talked about this last week. I said I've got a uh, I, I gave myself basically a, a to do item um, to go through and update the and optimize the uh, juice spikes. And uh, I was able to do that. Um, and the the reason I wanted to do that is because we've been having so much success using the juice spikes, but I, at the same time. A lot of the reason for um, executing trades on the juice were um, kind of hidden from you guys, right? So I would go in and take a look at one of the files that the system generates every night, and then you know interpreted it for you on these on these videos. So um, I didn't think that was right. I wanted to be more transparent. So um, if we go over to time trades over here, we can go to the chart and we can take a look at the updated juice. You'll notice that this has um, uh, a different look to it. It's the uh, orange line. So on the website here, we've got juice on, okay? And again, remember, this is a measure of planetary alignments. So um, what I did is I've uh, uh, tested out a number of different definitions of what planetary alignment should be included and excluded. And I found um, the, the optimal ones, I believe. And uh, that's the change that uh, went live earlier today. Okay, so um, now there's much less need for me to sort of go in and say, oh, you should pay attention to this spike and, and ignore the other one. Everything on the juice now is important, okay? So uh, you can have increased confidence there. And one of the things I really like about um, interpreting the juice is it's one of the few um, tools in our toolkit that are almost always bullish, okay? Um, a lot of what I talk about, I'll, I'll say, yeah, you know, we, we see a pivot around here or a pivot there, but I don't know if it's a pivot high or a pivot low. Um, most of the times when we see pumps, and there's a few counter examples here, but most of the time when we see spikes in the juice, right, we will see bullish moves like over here in October, November. Over here in October 3rd, we got a juice spike on a red candle, okay? Um, but almost always, and you can go back, and this is the cool part about the Time Trades Toolkit, is you can go back and you can... You can test this yourself on whatever it is you trade. I happen to trade QQQ the most, so this is how I like to do it. But you know, there's nothing stopping you from applying the juice to you know your favorite coin or 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 stock. Um, you know, and you can see here how in general these tend to be pretty bullish. And there's some here's some more over here, January 8th and 9th, boom, big green candles, January 18th, big gap up, right? Um, and even some of the smaller ones over here, we can we can see February 14th, green candle, March 1st, big green candle, March 20th, big green candle. That was um, 
that was a trade I covered last week. That that was FOMC day, and this this spike here is one of the reasons why I took that trade. Okay, um, so we're not going to see a juice spike until April 11th. Um, uh, and then we've got another big one over here, April 29th. Okay, so um, uh, this is one one update, and you know we can go. You can go over here to influencers, and if you're kind of new to time trades, um, uh, influencers is another incredibly powerful tool in the web application. Uh, this capability might be a little bit hidden, so I want to highlight it um, because when I update these probabilities over here, when the code runs every night, it also updates this list of influencers that shows what are the top 100 most influential events out of 1,238, okay? Um, so this is the top 100 influencers over pivots. And if we search for juice, we can see down here, juice is number 97 over pivots, okay? And if we sort by moves and search for juice, we'll see juice is number 64 um, rank uh, on moves. So this is out of 1200, top 100 out of 1200. And the number here represents a rank, right? So lower number is more important. It ranges from zero to 100. So this is basically 5.6 out of 100 is this juice spike here. So um, you can instantly get a sense of how influential or how important um, some of these items are. Um, so if we go back to the chart, we can see that this coming week, it's pretty quiet um, uh, when it comes to juice spikes. Um, but then, you know, April 11th and April 29th are both days of, of high interest. Okay, so let's flip back over to Trading View, um, and let's turn on um, some of our uh, time trade tools here. We've got Planetary Lines, okay, and Planetary Lines is right now. This is um, uh, scaled at twenty two fifty. I don't have any lines on at the moment, but I do have um, the speed index turned on, which I use quite a bit. Let's maybe also turn on North Node, South Node. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, we can turn those on. Um, and we also have the ruler, okay? Um, so this ruler is anchored to December 27th and it's got uh, some synodic intervals configured on it. You can see those there, so we can turn that on. Uh, we can also take a look at time trades events. We've got nodal events, declination events. Now these I like because they help me identify pivots in the speed index, okay? Um, and we've got all the planets. So we're gonna turn that guy on. Um, and we also have time trades over here and we're gonna turn that on. Okay, so now we've got a little bit more structure on our chart. We can take a look at what's going on here. Um, so usually, um, a couple things I like to look at. For price, I look at like to look at this teal line here that is coming from the, see this teal line is coming from the time trade script. And this is um, subdividing the white magic levels into eighths. And you can see how wicks up uh, above that teal line are pretty important, okay? And also have the, uh, Planetary, uh, the planetary speed index here. Um, this guy is also important. So let's maybe get rid of some of these planetary lines so we can focus in on just the speed index. Now, um, when I look at the speed index, I only tend to focus, I focus in on two things. Number one, inflections in the speed index, okay? Like where it changes direction. So looks like we're kind of in the middle of a direction change right in this area here. Right. And the second thing I like to do is I like to take a look at um, at events. OK, so um, the time trades event script identifies declination changes and nodal events. And these often identify areas where there is an inversion in how we should interpret the speed index. Right. So um, uh, we've got 
one of these coming up here um april 2nd okay so well, um and we also have the um the blue line down here you can see that little stub of a blue line that is a lunar declination low we can see how that made a low over here about a month ago on march 5th um so my interpretation here is that we make a low around this inflection point in the speed index and then head back up to the next high in the speed index and maybe get as high as the teal one eighth line. And this also aligns with uh, a couple of synodic cycles here. We've got Mercury Earth and we've got Mars Uranus, right? So both of those are moving 15 degrees since the last label. Um, and uh, I like the fact that this is going to align with a, a, a speed index change in direction. Now there's also a couple more um, a couple more pink declination events between now and then. Um, so it's really kind of hard to interpret all the changes in direction and, and possibilities for inversions, okay? So I'm making the assumption here that we're going to go back up um, this uh, this uh, declination max in Mercury is, <laughs> excuse me, is not going to trigger an inversion. Um, I'm making the forecast here that, you know, maybe we get a low on Monday or Tuesday with this uh, lunar declination low. In fact, I may make that change right now and just sort of slide this over here and, uh, and, and uh, incorporate uh, the potential for a low on Monday. All right. Um, and then looking for a high in alignment with this speed index high over here. But if you look out... Um, uh, later in the month, I really think, uh, you know, Mar April 19th or so is kind of the uh, a great time to be looking at uh, what I think is going to be uh, a great buying opportunity. Now, um, I don't know if we're going to just consolidate sideways or if we're going to actually get a get a price correction, get a pr correction in price as well as a correction in time. Um, but I do think that at this stage in the market, there's a lot of reasons for um, a pause, okay? So I think even though we were showing a move up here, um, I don't think this is gonna take us to new all-time highs. I don't think this is going to kick off a new wave in the bull going up. Uh, I think this is part of a neutral to choppy down move that ends um, in uh, uh, mid-April. And if we go over to time trades, we can see that that um, kind of al aligns quite nicely. Let's go to NDX. Whoops, NDX. So that interpretation lines up kind of nicely with the pivots that we see here. We see a pivot April 8th and 9th, and we see another pivot on April 18th. And then we see this um, a, a, a big cluster of probabilities of moves, okay? So from a option strategy standpoint, this looks actually more like uh, a good environment for, for selling options or maybe even call spreads um, for the next few weeks. Um, I don't think we're going to be seeing any, any big moves here until we get... Um, you know, some some more juice back in into the system, get some more energy back into the system, and that starts to build uh, mid-April. All right, so we're going to leave this forecast un unchanged and carry it forward from from last week, with the exception of the minor little change that I just made right here to um, include the possibility of a low April first. All right. So that is that for uh, the NASDAQ. Um, and uh, I'll be back shortly with a quick take on Bitcoin and gold. All right, we are looking at Bitcoin here. And uh, we drew, in last week's video, we drew a green target box over here. Um, and we uh, were thinking that we would get some sort of correction back down to maybe retest the white magic level again. Um, uh, what's interesting from a price standpoint with Bitcoin is, uh, I'll take off Venus intervals here so you can see how the teal 
one eighth of a magic level is really, really important. Uh, let's just hide these rulers for now. So you can see how the taps on these levels are really critically important. We can see some topping tails over here indicating that uh, some selling pressure is coming in. Um, when we turn on planetary lines though, then I think you can see a little bit better kind of where we are um, relative to the last Mercury Helio cycle. So these planetary lines are configured at uh, 5625. Uh, and I'm showing the nodes as well as Mercury Helio. Um, and we're coming up to um, an area of Mercury Helio 180. And I know it's 180 degrees because it's the, it's the cross over here without a vertical line. All right. Now, when we go back in time, we can see that the last Mercury orbit, the something similar happened, right? Well, obviously we got the Mercury, Mercury Helio crossover, but... Um, this may actually be a template for what could happen coming up. We could see a pump up um, and then a potential rejection. So um, if if that were to happen exactly the way it did uh, in January, we would see a pump up um, to the 76 area um, before before a move down. Okay, so that's a big assumption, right? Assuming that you know, these things play out exactly the way they did before. Um, but right now you can see we're kind of coiling within that 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 triangle shape. Um, and you can see we did do a, did have a similar coil over here uh, within the triangle shape of the, the Venus helio planetary lines. OK, so that's something that caught my eye. Um, what else is catching my eye here? Okay, so if we turn on the, the time trades ruler here, we can see that um, the Mercury Helio 15 degree um, labels are starting to stretch out again, okay? And you can see how when they stretched out over here, um, we got a collapse back down to the, to the white magic level. So maybe we don't have to worry about that until a little bit later on when we start to see that, that bigger stretch or slow and slowdown of, uh, of Mercury. Um, now let's go and take a look at the other rulers that we added here. We added, um, uh, the moon and we added, uh, Mercury and Venus. Um, and there's, really no major um no major labels coming up this this week the next uh, uh sidereal moon uh 304 degree label is uh april 9th okay um but we we got through these labels with no real pivot no material pivot in any direction um 91 um seems to be alternating low high low. So this could be a low here if we get a push up um, above the uh, 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 above this planetary line here. Um, and what else do we want to look at here on Bitcoin? I think we should probably take a take a look at the machine learning in uh, time trades. Here we are. And we can see how we still have that probability of a pivot on April 2nd. Um, and then, of course, we've got increasing juice. Um, you know, juice as an astrophysical indicator, it's the same for, for all. Um, but let's take a look at, at, at how Bitcoin reacts when there's a ju juice spike. We got a big green bar over here, March 20th. Um, not much of a reaction, March 2nd. Nice reaction there, uh, February 14th. We got a red bar January 18th. We kind of got a top on January 9th. So it looks like Bitcoin doesn't re does not react as well to juice spikes as the queues. So um, we based on this, we can turn that off. We can also, we don't have to make that determination by observation. We can go over here to influencers and we can search for juice and see if it's even among the top 100 and it's not on the page. So um, point is that we know that the juice spikes that are incredibly influential for tech stocks, not influential at all 
well, I shouldn't say that, less influential for Bitcoin. Okay, we'll go back to the chart. So machine learning is finding a pivot over here, April 2nd, and then big probabilities of a move April 18th. Of course, the big news is the halving um, coming up this month. So, um, you know, given the given the recent trend, given um, uh, the, the, the news that's coming up, um, it would seem like long should be the default direction. Um, and uh, we can see over here, we've got this coil right within just above um, uh, a, a teal one eighth line. And we're also within a orange mercury planetary line as well as an olive south node line. Now, you know, I like the south node lines on my chart. They do tend to indicate areas of major pivots. And you can see up here the gray north node not line acted as a major um, pivot area down here. Uh, same thing down here. It provided support. Okay. But if we're, it looks like we're grinding through the support here. Um, so my uh, interpretation of this is that, you know, with the news coming up, um, and with this uh, uh, with with this uh, 180 helio 180 event coming up as well, um, it would not surprise me to see Bitcoin push up into you know the 76 area um, into the next uh, sort of south node uh, resistance area uh, and do something similar to what happened over here in the last, Mercury helio orbit where, um, we'll let this redraw for a sec. So it was over here where we got a big push up into that crossover and then we saw some topping tails on the candles before pulling back. So that's kind of my immediate short term look here on Bitcoin. We've got a pivot coming up uh, in the forecast for uh, tomorrow and Tuesday from the mach machine learning, and that might be um, the the, the um, area from which we push up into the next Helio crossover line around 76. Okay, thanks for that. I'll be back shortly with a look at gold. All right, we're back with gold. So I haven't really had the time to take a deep look at gold lately, but um, boy, you can sure see how influential the sun is uh, on gold. So let's just review the planetary line settings that we're using here. I've got this configured at 135, okay? And we're showing sun and earth, all right? That's it. Uh, mirroring is on, really simple, okay? Um, and we can see how the sun line down here, huge support, busts through, comes back, retests. This is a great bullish confirmation here. Another retest here in December. Retest, little probe below, but it regained the next day, okay, over here in February. And then again, we see the same behavior. Come up, pull back, retest, blast off, all right? And now we're in blast off mode. So um, everyone that isn't already long gold is wondering, okay, uh, when and how do I get in? Everyone that is long gold, depending on how aggressive you are, is wondering when do you take profit? So um, I've got an answer here or a potential answer, but before I get to that, let me share um, kind of a longer term view, right? Because something really important happened on, on gold this week, and that is we got to close above a white magic level. Okay, more important in my opinion than a new all-time high. Okay, it made a new all-time high. Uh, that's great. But we did it above a new white magic level. So that opens up a whole new Fibonacci spiral for us. So I want to zoom up, zoom back out, take a look at um, the monthly view and see what sort of happens on a monthly view when we take out uh, a new white magic level. Okay, and... Um, often it is the kickoff to a significant bullish move. Um, usually, right, we it will go to the next white magic level with, you know, a little bit of drama in between sometimes. Um, in 2002, it was a straight shot. 
in 2006, it was a straight shot. In 2008, we had a pullback to about halfway, right? One, two, three, four. So that's halfway between, okay? Pretty deep pullback. And then it went pretty much two magic levels straight up, right? Half of this one, one whole one, half of the next, okay? Um, so that was a very strong move here from 2008 to 2011. And then we got, then we created this like 2011 to 2020, like this nine year cup. And, and it looks like we just finished a four year handle on the nine year cup. Okay. So I think it's important not to think small when it comes to gold, right? Um, you know, it's possible in a couple years time or a one year's time, we're talking about $3,600 gold, all right? Um, so that's kind of the big picture. Now let's zoom back into the daily and we can take a look at, take a look at what we're, what we're seeing here. All right, so, the recent important low on the chart that I'm anchoring to, anchoring my rulers to, is this one here, October 6th, okay? And with a little bit of trial and error and the help of the influencers, okay, because I wanted to do some analysis and I wanted to do some analysis using a metric that was important. So this is how you use the influencer tab. And this is one of the things that is really, really cool and powerful about time trades is that I can get a very quick view on what is important for this particular symbol I'm looking at. So I scan down here and I notice that Venus Earth Synodic Speed is among the most important for both pivots and moves, okay? Um, so I've got a ruler for that. I can go over to trading view and I can anchor a ruler to here, to this important low. And I can use Venus Earth Synodic Speed and a little bit of trial and error gives me an interval of 36 degrees to catch this high, this high. And the next time this is happening is Wednesday this week, okay? So my point, um, there's probably a little bit more of a high to go in gold. I think we're gonna see it top out in, in Wednesday this week, right? And then any sort of pullback that comes afterwards is a great chance to load up. Maybe we get a retest of the white magic level here. The next Venus Earth 36 is May 31st. So keep that in mind, of course, if you play options on gold. Um, and let's go and take a look and see what the machine learning is telling us. We go to the chart. We can see we have a pivot, probabilities of a pivot, which I think is gonna be a pivot high, that landed on Friday, okay? So that is also very close to Wednesday coming up. So my assessment and my analysis, and this is just for education purposes, showing you how to use the time trades tools. This is not a recommendation or a trade recommendation. Is to, um, my assessment is that we're gonna see a, a high in gold between now and Wednesday, right? And then we've got another pivot over here, April 17th. And then we've got a nice big cluster of moves in May and also uh, in June, okay? So um, I'm gonna be patient here, wait for a pullback, see if I can get positioned a little closer to the white magic level and not chase. That is my personal analysis on, on gold. Okay, so that's it for this week's video. Thanks again for watching. Uh, I appreciate you. Thanks for using time trades. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you again next week. Bye now.